Raid has kind of been thought of as a savior in terms of disk failure. It has parity of mirroring, so if a disk fails, you get all your data back. Or, well, it should. So, a bit ago, this article came out, actually about 10 years ago now, that said Raid 5 stopped working in 2009. And this headline kind of bounced around, and it's still bouncing around with newer data and other articles. And a lot of this is based on the idea that a hard drive has a rated URE rate of 10 to the power 14. So that means every 10 to the power 14 bytes, you will probably get a read error. Or that's what the manufacturer says. You look more into that manufacturer rating and you notice that many old 100 gig drives have that exact same rating as new 8 terabyte drives. And the fact that most manufacturers say 10 to the power 14 is also leading to my guess, which is that number is we just slapped the label on it and not a actual scientific number that they've ran due to lots of testing. And it is probably a guaranteed you'll get that number or less and you should plan for it, but is it actually an issue, especially with lower budget arrays where having spinning hundreds on extra drives isn't that useful? Now this site has led to a lot of calculators such as this one, which use equations like this, which essentially multiply the number of errors using that rate by the number of drives. And if we do a test, which I'm going to do, so six drives, two terabytes each, and the 10 to the power 14 read error rate, they say you'll get a success rate of 38% during the rebuild. And that just felt off to me. And that might be what the specs say, and the math is definitely right, but I've rebuilt multiple RAID 5 arrays, and I don't remember them failing anywhere near that often with drives of similar size and RAID array size. So we're going to build a RAID array and rebuild it, a lot of times and see if we can find a difference. Now, the problem is, is it's, is this only on failing drives? Is this 10 to the power 14 evenly spread out? Because if it's not evenly spread out, you might have an issue where a failing drive gives you a ton of errors which would raise up that rate. And also different drives have different levels, maybe vibration levels, there's a lot of things, but we're gonna just do a test and see if we get anywhere near that. Let's do like 10 rebuilds and see if we run into an issue. For setup, this is what I'm going to be using. So this is an AMD FX system, nothing super exciting. You don't need a very fast system. I'm going to be using Linux MD RAID as it's more of a just traditional RAID solution. I could use a hardware RAID controller as well, but MD seems to log better and it's just easier to work with from what I've dealt with and I don't really want to do with the motherboard RAID. The other issue is what does a URE do? So in the worst case, it'll just stop rebuilding and say, uh-uh, and you lose all your data on there. In the best case, you lose the bit or byte of data. And normally, uh, you don't really know, but the URE should be relatively small, so you might only lose a file. And while a file is still very bad to lose, it's one file compared to potentially losing a massive array of data. And as we see it now, I have a resync running. I'm actually doing this resync on a RAID 1 of two 2 terabyte drives with one that has known issues, just to see what the errors look like because I want to make sure that I can actually log these errors correctly if an error comes up. So I have journal control showing the Linux logs, which should show me if there's any issues. Right now, it basically said I have an MD array running with background reconstruction, which is when it just makes sure the mirror is a perfect mirror, and it's I'm active with two out of two mirrors, which means it's working fine. We're going to try removing drives. But for the testing, though, we're going to be using the Seagate video hard drives. They have that 10 to the power 14 rating. They have been pretty reliable for me. They're relatively low power, slow drives. You get about 130 megabytes per second out of them and not really had an issue with them. So let's see how this does with a few rebuilds. We'll run a ton of rebuilds and look at what the numbers are like after. So the testing has been done and after 10 rebuilds, changing all the drives out so all the drives have been rebuilt, we got 10 successful rebuilds and no failures. And if we go run something like a chi-squared test on it, we find out that that result, it would be extremely unlikely if the, um, if that read error rate was actually true. So, pretty much, that listed read error rate on drives is extremely unlikely in this situation to be true. Now, it might be true that all those read errors, they've averaged them out to that number, and all the numbers we're seeing is, and they just all appear at the very end of life. That could be true. Could also be true under certain environments, like 
not going to say this is the best environment here. It's not cooled super well. There's no vibration of sitting on just wooden tables. That's not the best. Um, I'm using MD RAID. I don't know why that would cause an issue. Hardware RAID should give me the same result, but if you wanted me to test it. Another possible explanation is that maybe the data is just being read wrong. So I had BTRFS on the whole thing with data when I was rebuilding it all. So it's all checksummed and it's reading and it reads back just fine. So the MD drives, there's no read errors of any corruption errors at all. And that BTRFS is running on top of MD, so I'm not using BTRFS for RAID. And I can't think of an explanation that would give the numbers. And that seems to be the rate they're showing is the actual rate that would be given to your system, not the internal read rate. To my knowledge, there's no easy way to get the actual amount of read errors. The smart data should show it to you, but it's weird because there's a lot of checksumming and stuff inside the drive that fixes it. So pretty much, yeah, that data is wrong. And the, having a single drive for redundancy when parity does put the drives under stress, and if a drive's about to fail, it can cause issues. But the whole warning of having six 2 terabyte drives, I mean, there's only a 38% chance of failure, that is very unlikely to be true. So where do we get the data off this? The fact that I've yet to get a single read error on all these drives tells me I need a lot more drives and need to run them a lot more to get the actual read error rates on these drives, which I might do. And in conclusion, this pretty much points out to me that for a home system with relatively few, relatively small drives like the 6x2 terabyte RAID 5, really RAID 5 is fine. The chance of a rebuild error on these drives is quite low. These really aren't even that great of drives, so a new drive should be a lot better. And I wouldn't worry about the whole may it might not rebuild type issue. I think you should always have backups because the whole array might get corrupted. This computer might get destroyed in something like a house fire. The power supply might kill all your drives. There's many other ways to lose your data, but the chance that the you rebuild and another and you get a read error seems to be pretty low. Now, another drive might fail, which might happen, but seeing the amount of drives I've had failing, I seem to be sitting at around 1% drive error failure rates per year. And I don't even treat them that well, and a lot of them are older drives. So, you can kind of get the data out of that. If you do that, the, the rebuild failure chance of another drive dying would be quite low, probably in the tenths of a percent. And I just say, if you have good backups, you probably won't lose much. And if you're worried about a tenth of a percent, run RAID 6 or RAID 10. Uh, RAID 10 still has the issue of there's only a single copy of any data you're rebuilding. Well, RAID 6 um, has two copies of any data. And if you're running something like RAID Z3, you have triple copies. Or if you're running like a triple mirror on something like storage spaces or ZFS. Um, that's about it for now. Oh, one other funny um, characteristics. What ended up happening being the slowest drive most of the time was the WD Black. And these Seagate Video 5900 RPM drives happen to be faster? That's weird. But, thanks for watching. More videos looking into hard drive error rates in the future.